Today, we have an interview with A.C. Burleson. A.C. Burleson walks across 2,000 miles from South Carolina to the Grand Canyon. You're having coffee with Conrad on... Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. And when you have a relationship with Jesus, it causes you to do stuff, sometimes even crazy stuff. That relationship with Jesus Christ caused my friend A.C. Burleson to walk out of his front door of his house in South Carolina with only $34 in his pocket and head out to the Grand Canyon in Arizona, carrying a cross for over 2,000 miles. Now, after A.C. finished his journey, I was able to interview him to get, I wanted to get some of his ups and downs and some testimonies. And I I'm going to play some clips from the interview as well as clips from some of his actual Facebook lives so you can get the feel of what it was like and be with him when he was carrying the cross. Without further ado, here is the interview with A.C. Burleson, Crosswalker. We are having coffee with Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Jesus Hey, everybody, do I have a treat for you? I have on the phone with me A.C. Burleson. You remember him. I told you a while back. He started out on March 11th, walking the cross from South Carolina all the way to the Grand Canyon, and he made it, and he's here to talk to us today. What's up, A.C.? How you doing, man? What's going on, Conrad? Um, uh, Not much. I I completed the race, praise God, and I'm just kind of chillaxing for a minute and seeing what the good Lord brings next. Mm-hmm. How does your shoulder feel? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, right now my shoulders are a little sore. They 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 are sore. In fact, I got this weird twitch in my shoulder too. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like I mean, I have to like move it a certain way just to get it to feel better after so long. After after carrying it so long. Amen. So how many miles did you actually walk? Like two thousand. Yeah, about two thousand, give or take. And you started March eleventh, and you finished when? Um, tell you the truth, I think it was the twentieth, twenty second, the twenty second of July. Maybe. Oh man, I, I couldn't tell you. I ain't gonna fib. <laughs> I ain't gonna fib. It's it's all a blur, right? Yeah, that day was pretty quick, man. The the finishing time was very fast. Like I mean, to watch God just move so quickly in my life, it just blew me out the water. Amen. What was uh, what was a typical typical day like? A typical day would <laughs> resolve in me getting my stuff together, carrying the cross out of a motel, a house, or whatever, and meeting people as I go out right away, start talking to them about Christ, go out, walk the cross, people come up to me, talk to me, um, me give them, of course, to pray and be ready for the coming of Christ, and, you know, definitely encourage, pray with them even, you know, try my best to encourage them to come to the Lord. Amen. That's basically a typical day. Amen. And what, what's your cross? I know I did an interview with you earlier, but uh, for the people that didn't listen to that, what's your cross like? It's got wheels and you, how do you carry mm-hmm. your clothes and how do you drink and eat and all that? Oh, do you, amen, do you drink Tang <laughs> like the astronauts? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I've, I don't think I've drank any Tang or nothing like that, but uh, I definitely, um, it's definitely a four by four made out of uh, cedar because it was a lighter weight wood. Um, and it's got urethane stain and it's got two wheels on it, which I've replaced once already. And, um, that's good for balancing. And now it's got steel plates on it where it cracked. And so, I mean, it's definitely, uh, and it's got some wear and tear on it from the carry, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. where it's hit sidewalks. <laughs> Did you have a lot of prayer time? Did you listen to music? Oh, 100% prayer time. Definitely. I definitely had a lot of prayer time. I'm, um, yeah, that was definitely good prayer time. Like I would just in joy sitting at the feet of christ you know just sit there and just uh you know just relax of course when the family got here it got a little bit more busier so i'd have to find little hit hit and misses times to speak with christ like first thing in the morning or it'd be later on in the evening when everybody was asleep another thing that i thought was pretty awesome is we were watching your facebook lives and some of your youtube videos it's Mm -hmm. like you never went 
I mean, you're still alive. I mean, you you had some you had some you had some questions like where am I going to sleep tonight a few times, but it's like, it's like every night you were you were taken care of. Yeah, that is in and of itself a miracle of God. <laughs> tell me, tell me about that, man. I mean, from the very get go, from the very get go, uh, I just tried my best to listen to the word of God one and what he was telling me. Um, when I left my house, I did not plan to come back. So that the very next night, the, um, the good Lord told me to stay with my grandmother, which was in Andrews. I was about 13 miles away. So I stayed in, in, in Andrews. And the next night after that, I ended up in Manning. And when I ended up in Manning, I had 34. I mean, dude, just amazing stuff, dude. I had like $34 in my pocket, bro. I, this, is, this one's really cool. You're going to like this one. I had $34 in my pocket. And the Lord told me to go down this certain road in Manning. It was starting to get dark. And I'm like, man, I don't want to go down this road. It's not following my GPS. So I go, to, I go down the road my GPS tells me. And then I run into a lady cop. She ends up telling me, look here, there's a motel back that way. If you go back down that same road, the Lord told me to go down. <laughs> so I go down that road. I walk up to the um, to the clerk and I'm like, hey, man, you know, I'm carrying this cross, cross country. I uh, just basically started and I have thirty four dollars. How much is your night? And he said, 40. I'm like, man, this is all I got. I even give you change. He ended up taking the money and saying, all right, you got the room and seeing the cross. Now, when he saw the cross. He was like, oh, my goodness, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Like I said, I already told him. And uh, his wife comes out and was like, man, this is crazy. And as I go to my room, I'm like, you guys come on over. We'll talk Jesus. And uh, because they apparently are Christians. Well, I get in my room. The guy helps me get into my room with the cross. He tells me, go ahead and get breakfast next door. They'll help you out tomorrow. I said, well, brother, you got all my money. <laughs> he said, oh, OK, OK. And, and before he leaves, his wife comes up and she says, uh, can, she walks in and says, can I can I touch the cross? I'm like, absolutely. Go ahead. And as she goes, man, everything goes quiet. And she's just like touching and crying, touching the cross. And I'm sitting there looking at her husband. I'm like, is everything OK with her? And she and he says she has an illness in her stomach. And um, I said, well, can I pray for her before she leaves? And um, he said, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And right before she goes to walk out, I said, ma'am, can I pray for you? She said, I don't want to talk right now. I just want to go. And I and I and as she leaves, I'm like, brother, I'll pray for your wife. And he said, hey, come back here. <laughs> he said, you he wants to pray for you. And so we come back. I pray for her and then they leave. The next morning, bro, when he comes to help me get my cross out the room, he hands me money to go get breakfast. I go next door to go get breakfast. They give it to me for free. And that while I'm in there, I witness to the crowd of people in there. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And and when I walk out, when I walk out to go back to the um to the hotel to get my cross and stuff, because he said I could just leave it there for a second, um, a lady that I was witness witnessing to ended up coming back around and handing me a hundred dollars. And and I was like, what? And I started with nothing that day. You know what I'm saying? Hold the phone. Isn't that amazing? AC was directed by the Lord to walk out of his house with only $34 in his pocket. Would you do that? That's called faith. And the divine appointments happened right off the bat, one after the other, his entire trip. His entire walk was a series of divine appointments. His needs were met as well. I'm blown away about how God does that. Now we're going to hear about a close call. In in our previous podcast, I was talking about this wasn't just a good idea. If you guys listen to the previous podcast, he talks about how this is a call upon his life. And someone spoke in tongues and said, someone in this room is supposed to be a walking memorial. I mean, that, and then this is, like I said, this is not just a good idea. And when you say the Lord told me to go down that road, People need to understand, man, you were following the spirit of God. Well, you were kind of ignoring, and then he gave you uh, a correction here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's following God, man. You know, mm -hmm. people need to know that, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, Absolutely. that's my message is you have that spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. But um, mm -hmm. now, let's talk about some close calls. Did you ever have any, like, dangerous, scary oh. moments? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. One of the scariest moments I ever had when I was walking on a, with a shoulder about two foot wide. And I'm telling you, some God had had to intervene because that car that come at me should have hit me. I'm being dead honest when you know how my cross is about 12 foot behind me. OK, mm -hmm. I'm coming around the curve and I'm heading towards the right way. This white SUV come at me now, bro. I could feel the wind from the um the rear view mirror on the on the passenger side coming at me hit my shoulder basically and I just knew within myself 
that that back of that cross was about to get nailed. So I closed my eyes and said, ooh, that's all I said. And I gritted like I was getting ready for impact. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know how. I do not know how to this day how in the world it did not hit the backside of my cross. I don't know. I, it, that is the closest thing. That was the scariest moment I think I've ever had. And the you do know, was, man. It was Jesus. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like it's like that that earlier that day. It was the weirdest thing for me to out of nowhere say on my podcast. Y'all gotta pray pray I don't get hit, okay? And it was the weirdest thing. I just randomly said that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, well, why in the world I say that? <laughs> you know? And so just by God's grace, man, someone must have been praying because I was. I know <laughs> after I said it. <laughs> Psalm 91, man, he's got his angels around you. Hi, this is Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry in North Memphis. We are educating and mentoring young girls in the North Memphis area. You can find out more information on JillDyson.com and Angel Street Memphis on our Facebook page. Right now, I'm having coffee with Conrad on ConradRock.net. Now, in this part of the podcast, I want to go ahead and play a few clips of his Facebook Live so you can be there with him and feel like what it was to walk his cross. Now, at this point, he happens to be in Memphis, and he needs to cross the huge Mississippi River on foot. Let that sink in for a minute. He finds himself in a predicament, and guess what? People call the cops on him. But yeah, guys, that's what I'm saying, like, police officers are out there because I told people to pray and be ready for the coming of Christ. And and now, and people called him saying, oh, I'm being a bad guy. And uh, wow, I'm pretty sure they've heard a whole lot worse than pray and be ready for the coming of Christ. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God is so good. I love Jesus. Anyway, uh, I'll, let, I'll let you guys know how it turns out, what happens. The guy, uh, one police officer said, if we cannot get the gate unlocked for me, the one police officer said he'll come back and take me across the river because I'm kind of stuck on the other side of the river. Hey, Billy. Uh, and so, I mean, and, uh, hold on one second. You, you might have somebody with a key? Yeah. By God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. As soon as he gets the call, we'll find out. If not, I'll get you over. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much. Man, I love Jesus. But anyway, the very same police that was called on me because I walked over the bridge telling people to pray and ready for the coming of Christ ended up being the same police that's going down here to meet me to open up the gate so I can get across. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. What the enemy meant for bad turned out for good for me. Now, wasn't that amazing? I think it's awesome that he's in this predicament to where he can't even get across the river without help. And, you know, these people call the police on him thinking they're doing something evil, you know. He's preaching, and they call the cops on him. <laughs> I mean, think about it. And what they actually did is they gave him a way to get across the bridge. He had favor. He had favor with the authorities. That's how God works. Now, in this next clip, um, this is around the same season, and Susan and I were praying, and we could sense that there was some spiritual warfare going on with him. What looks like maybe a small little sidetrack, it turns in to be something that could possibly derail his entire mission. So here's a few clips from that season. Hey guys, Walk Memorial here. I don't know how well the video is holding out because I'm, I'm riding in a car. But I'm going backwards. <laughs> back to Memphis. Uh, one of the craziest things is that uh, um, I'm headed back to see a pastor that's in the hospital. And uh, I'd like to be able to pray with her and things like this. And I heard that she can also even interpret dreams and stuff like this. So, I mean, we're just going to try and wing it and see what happens. <laughs> he ended up stopping and saying, hey, breakfast? I'm like, no, ma'am. She's like, you want some breakfast? I'm sure, why not? And lo and behold, she ended up just, we ended up hitting it off talking about, you know, Jesus a whole lot. And she's like, man, I'd love for you to meet my pastor and stuff like this. And she's at the hospital. So, uh, and she was just like, you know what? How would you like to come to my pastor if you can? And... Uh, I'll just get you a motel later. And I'm like, absolutely, that works out awesome. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it still puts me back, where, you know, at least at least where I was. I mean, you know, praise God and see what the good Lord brings. I uh, just found out some, you know, some more just like devastating news. It just seems like the enemy's having havoc with me. And he's trying his best to stop me. And there's a lot going on. And I, I, hey, every bit of y'all's words of encouragement, I have heard every bit of them. You know, and uh, 
some, but I got some more, some hard news that just come up to me. And, uh, and when it came, um, it just, it stopped me in my tracks. I was like, whoa, whoa, you know? So, I mean, so, I mean, this walk has, has, it has had its prices to come with it. I've had persecutions from people that I love. Um, I've had a lot of stuff that come up against me and this was one of the big ones cause I was really putting hopes into it. And, um, and now, like I said, it's gone. It really put a damper on a lot of stuff, um, that, that I was like wanting to do. But again, you know, I still managed when, after I hung up the phone with my wife, I still managed, I, I took me a minute because I was just collecting myself. And then when I, when I come to the edge of the bed, I remember saying, to myself no matter what satan you're not going to steal my praise so i lifted up my head and i said god i praise you and i thank you you know what i'm saying and i just started thanking him and stuff you know regardless of what happened you know so i mean that was my whole game plan was to just keep my praise don't let the enemy steal my praise that's one thing he cannot take from me he can't take it It's gotten surreal uh, carrying this cross. It really has. Uh, I just can't do it anymore. You know what I'm saying? I've been walking this walk and pushing and pushing. And I, I still believe God telling me to keep going. But, I mean, I'm at the point where it's like it's do or die. You know what I'm saying? Like, and my wife and kids, I told her, I told my wife that I'd be coming home in a week. And uh, she said, no, don't come home. And I'm like, well, we'll see, we'll see. Because, I mean, all in a nutshell, I can't keep doing this kind of stuff. Um, I, I'm out here trying to spread the good news of the gospel and all, but it's gotten, it's just gotten bad at home. It really has. You can watch the enemy come at me. But again, I'm just speaking exactly what's happening. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing I can do about it. I've been praying. Oh, yesterday? The reason I didn't even get on yesterday is because I've been like, dude, in tears praying, like crying. God, I don't understand. Why is this happening? And Dude, I just, I felt the heaviness around me. I felt demonic activities. I, I felt so much pressure against me. I've had people tell me I just need to stop and go home and things like this. And, and, and I mean, it's, it's been hard pressure. Like, I'm not even lying. This is some difficult stuff going on right now. And so I, I said this morning, I said, all right, Lord. I said, if I'm kicking against the pricks here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm preparing myself to go home. So uh, someone has already offered me a ride all the way to North Carolina come Friday, okay? Now that's definitely a lesson we can all learn from. I, I, when I was watching AC's Facebook Lives, he had this smile, you know, 95% of the time when things were bad. He just had this smile that gave me encouragement. And when God gives us a mission, it's a co-mission. He, we're co-laborers with Jesus Christ. And um, this almost derailed him. However, he stuck with his fellowship in communion with the Lord. Now, remember how he had favor with the cops to get across the river. Because when he finally gets to the Grand Canyon, he runs into a similar problem where they may not let him in with the cross. Here's where he finally makes it. Hey guys, Walker Memorial here. I was just letting everybody know that uh, we just, uh, ever since I left the other day, I ran into um, some, uh, some people as soon as we left, and they were talking to us about uh, the cross and stuff like this, and, and how they just got out of um, doing a Psalms uh, thing like this, and that was just really cool. But guys, that's not what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. What I really wanted to talk to you guys about today is the fact we made it. Guys, we made it. <laughs> we made it. We made it to the Grand Canyon, guys. We did it. Hallelujah. We made it. Isn't God good? Isn't He so good? Look at this. Do you see this? Do you see this? This is absolutely breathtaking. We made it, guys. We made it. Praise God. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing, guys? Isn't that amazing? Four long months, and we made it. We absolutely made it. And everything happened so fast. 
and so quick that I did not have time the first day being here to film me getting in. Okay, I, I got to I got to tell you that I did not have time for me because everything God orchestrated all the way. I did not know everything was going to happen the way it did. God literally orchestrated everything, guys, everything. Like, I get up to the canyon doors and everything like this, and I couldn't get in, and you know what I'm saying, not without the money. And all of a sudden, a, a fellow by the name of Shannon ends up coming up to me. Hey, man, what you doing? He ends up getting me through before my wife can even get through at all. You know what I'm saying? She couldn't get through at all. And then, um, as soon as I'm in there, by the time Brother Shannon drops me off, I'm already at the south gate, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. And then I get to talk to some Mr. Curtis. He ends up like telling me I can't carry the cross all the way in and stuff like this and and God just uh opens doorways that I can and and I end up carrying the cross right up to the canyon and I get the minister and witness and I had some guy filming me and stuff like this so I couldn't just up and um Facebook it so I wanted to wait till today guys for all of it and and then it is absolutely breathtaking breathtaking guys God has done it he got me here all on faith, he got me here. When I first got here, I have to tell you, I kept, kept my head down low because I didn't want to see it as it crest above my hat and stuff, so I kept my head down. And then when I first looked at it and I looked up, I dropped to my knees, guys, and I just gave God all the glory, and I started praying, and I didn't care who was around me. I was praising God at first. Everybody started laughing and whatnot, and then next thing you know, everything went silent. Everything went quiet. Amen. Can you feel that? That's awesome. That's that's God. And I'm going to go back to the phone interview where AC talks about that moment. Of course, I just I, I had to stop and give God glory. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because he's the one who got me there. What was you that know, moment so, like, brother? Oh, my Lanta. It was it was amazing. It was amazing. At first, it, it almost got ruined whenever I first looked at it. And I went to kneel down and give God glory. I had so many people start laughing at me. And it kind of almost just upset me in my spirit. But then God literally, he literally quieted everybody and let me praise him. Like after they laughed, everything went quiet and I was able to praise him. And it was just truly a blessing. And it was just, it was so good. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got to walk up there and just look at the canyon. And it's beautiful too, by the way, just got to tell you. <laughs> Amen. Just pray and be ready for the coming of Christ. That sounds like that's your message. Why do yes, you say that, that? What does that mean? That is the message God gave me um, a long time ago. I used to write it on my car before I even carried the cross. He gave it to me so long ago. And, um, and, but I was praying for that earnestly. Like, I mean, I was like fasting, praying, God, I really want a message. Please give me a message and stuff like this. And one night God gave it to me. He gave me that message. Tell people to pray and be ready for the coming of Christ. And I did. <laughs> Amen. For some of this, for some of us, that could come by walking out in front of a bus. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> you never know, man. Yep. yep. Now is the time of salvation. What What is the future hold? I mean, I know you're kind of like uh, you just finished. What What What's the future for you? Um, my future, uh, I I do believe I'm going to try and write a book. Um, of this whole trip after the after that. I may end up going back out for another trip, you know, what I'm saying like I, I feel it, you know. So, I mean, but this time I might hit the northern side where it's a little bit cooler. <laughs> amen. Just don't go in the winter. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. You talk about stepping out of the boat in that last mm -hmm. podcast, too. And that that's one of your messages, too, because you're talking about Peter stepping out of the boat when Jesus said, come. Amen. And it was powerful. I mean, that's kind of like what you did, brother. You you stepped out. It, it, you just went. <laughs> you just went, man. I mean, you know, all of a sudden, hey, I'm gone. You know, that's that's inspiring. Amen. Amen. It's, it's an inspiring adventure. Now, I'm uh, you're, I'm going to have a link to your Facebook personal page, AC okay. Burleson. I'm also going to have a link to your YouTube channel. For those of you that don't go to the link, it's called Walking Memorial. Is that right? Yes. It's got different videos than your Facebook. Yes. What's like, like, what's the difference? Like like things I'll be walking and I'll see something really neat and I can't Facebook live because I might not have servers or something. So I'll record it and I'll be like, man, this is really cool. And then I'll take it and I'll put all the videos together and put it on my YouTube channel. So, I mean, different videos. <laughs> Amen. So you guys remember when I put these <laughs> links in here, go check out his Facebook 
his Facebook live videos so you can see what's going on at that moment and also his YouTube channel because it's going to be different stuff and mm-hmm. his PayPal to support him uh, paypal.me forward slash AC Burleson that will be in the show notes Amen <laughs> Amen God bless you brother thank you for coming on and sharing your testimony of your 2000 mile crosswalk with Coffee with Conrad Thank you Daddy sacrificed his son for every human being No longer separated Separated Now wasn't that amazingly awesome? I always say there's no divine appointments going to happen while you're sitting on the couch. Now, I want you to think about this. Think about the time God called you. You have a call on your life. Maybe it's not to walk the cross 2,000 miles, but God's calling you. And also, God's calling people that you know. There's, he has a call on the lives of those around you. Encourage people in their call. Encourage them to step out in faith. And you know what? Step back and watch what God does. He does amazing things. It's like impossible things happening one after another. I mean, if you go back and watch the Facebook Lives, I'm going to include the link to his Facebook Lives. He talks about just all these awesome things happening one after another. And uh, by the way, I'm going to include the links. If you want to follow AC, I'm going to include the link to his Facebook account. And also his YouTube, uh, they're they're different. Uh, the Facebook Lives are different than the YouTube. Uh, he would upload videos to YouTube if he didn't have a strong cell signal. So, yeah, I'm going to include the links to both of those. And I'm also going to include his PayPal link so you can help him out there. Now, uh, also I'm going to include a, a couple of links to the other shows that I did with him. So I want to encourage you to check out the show notes so you can find all those links. And while you're there, please take the time to like, rate, and comment, and even share the episode. Because every time you like, rate, comment, and share, it drives the podcast up in the rankings so new people can discover Coffee with Conrad from ConradRocks.net. God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. Until we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at ComradeRocks.net.